guys, welcome to 3ds Max News. For the month of April 2024, we had amazing stuff coming to 3ds Max, but we get as well as always amazing projects to showcase. On the 3ds Max is only for Archivith section, check it out because this month we had incredible things. So at the end of March we had an Autodesk event in Vancouver, I assisted for all of you that couldn't attend the event, it was pretty cool. We had Jose Lizardo talking about some of the features recently introduced in 3ds Max, like the Smart Extrude, the Ray Modifier, and the Fast Conform Modifier. We saw some demos of a future character pipeline update that we already saw some time ago on the 3ds Max roadmap. And where we could see some sneak peek of new things coming to 3ds Max was interestingly enough on the Maya presentation, where Autodesk explained that going forward, some new features will be cross-shared between Max and Maya, like a future Maya Booleans tool that is based on the 3ds Max Booleans, so nothing new for 3ds Max here, but there is in progress a new Bevel cutback tool to modernize the Bevel and Chamfer existing tools both in Max and Maya, allowing to do cutbacks plus fields and it's topology independent, non-destructive, and is complement to the Boolean workflow. So the idea is that it will work very tight with Booleans and this new on this new Bevel cutback tool. After the 3 ds Max presentation, we had Dave Worsley, where he did a great presentation in how the amazing generalist team at ILM used 3 ds Max for a stagecraft and post-production. Sadly, the images there were totally confidential, so I couldn't record anything there, but they've showcased different making of how they have been using 3ds Max on the latest ILM productions. It was really, really interesting, and yeah, if you couldn't attend, uh, I think it was very nice. By the way, ILM has been uh, hiring for a generalist supervisor, you will have the link on the video description. Looks like they already found someone for the post, but uh, you can still apply. As you can see, they are looking for 3ds Max with familiarity with some plugins like Forest Pack and Multiscatter. And artificial intelligence is coming to 3ds Max. Tyson showcased what he's working on next for Typeflow, and it's a stable diffusion implementation right inside 3ds Max viewport making use of control net options like viewport zdef to drive stable AI creations will be very interesting to see where this is going. I think that can be very, very promising. But Tyson is not the only one, since Victor Larson also showcased a similar implementation with image to image, text to image, control net, segmentation, upscalers, detail enhancers, and way more. A great way to enhance current workflows in 3ds Max. You can see how he's using it in different ways, like how he creates automatic textures for assets or how you can use it to upscale stuff or simply having very low res assets and having a very nice image that you can use to get some ideas. Morris Abramian released a Substance Painter bridge for 3ds Max. It supports UDIMs and legacy workflows, automatically creates shaders, works with 3ds Max 2021 and newer, and Substance Painter 7.1 or newer. The indie license is $39. And Spline Dynamics presented a new plugin called Showcaser. It allows for fast creation of animated project presentations inside 3ds Max to give life and dynamics to your scenes, models, products or characters in seconds without needing to know even how to animate. It has different presets for different animation styles that you can switch easily. You can think about it as a PowerPoint for 3ds Max. You will need Max 2015 or newer and the tool costs $19 and you can try it for free for 10 days. Scene Manager by Pulse has been updated to 2.5 with a new core assets model for tracking and collecting a scene assets, a plugin model that listens use plugins and an improved user interface. 
And on the free section, we had Fitted Kiral that released Instant Read Plugin, now totally free. It used to be a paid uh, plugin, now it's free. Instant Rig is an easy to use tool to create all types of rigs on a very, very easy way. It's a modular auto rig tool for 3ds Max users focused on K-Frame cartoon animations. It comes with an auto rigging tool, an auto skinning tool, an auto overlapping tool, copy, paste, flip, post manager, and you can find more information on the links of the description of the video below. Spline Dynamics update Get Materials to support Max 2025. It's a very simple but extremely useful script that you will use uh, quite a lot. With just one click, it opens the material editor and displays all the materials for the selected objects well organized in a clean view. Joseph Winnerreuther did a build for 3ds Max 2025 for the Ghost Trails plugin that originally was created by Andrew Reid. You can download it in GitHub for free. And as a curiosity, Kim Lee shared in the stack group in Facebook a poster from the first 3D studio in, in MS-DOS with a full collection of texture that was coming with the program back then called World Creation Toolkit. Pretty interesting to see some of this old stuff. We couldn't start a stronger or section 3ds Max is only for RGB this month. In April, we had the release of A Thousand Suns. It's a production by Black Milk Studio, created by McGregor. And the first six episodes of this universe are out, directed by Ruairi Robinson, McGregor itself, Tyson Witt Johnston, and Tim Hayten, written in collaboration with Philip Gelat. These six episodes of Pure science fiction tells each one a total different story, having in common a futuristic universe. And awesome environments, lighting, effects, really, really great stuff. The first episode, Ice, accumulates 1.5 million views in less than two weeks, and we know that all the VFX on this short has been done in 3ds Max. We have also a making of, totally worth watching, also showcasing how Ruairi Robinson, the director, 3D printed the futuristic helmet model in 3ds Max. So the asset that you can see, it's real. At the beginning I was thinking it was CG, but I mean, yeah, it was partly created in CG, but then 3D printed, but uh, the asset itself, it's a uh, plate. As well, a lot of the fantastic environments. Uh, some of the environments are enhanced on CG, but a lot of them are film on an amazing location, as you can see on the making of. Exodus, the third episode, had as well all the VFX handled in 3ds Max. It's a really sad short story about Hope that is maybe one of my favorites from the series. And the other that we know that all the VFX are 100% 3ds Max is the last episode, episode 6, that is called Tomorrowland. And no talk, no characters, but a short that doesn't need any of that to translate a message. And you should read the synopsis of the video description to... <laughs> it's an interesting synopsis. On these three episodes, all the VFX has been 3ds Max, V-Ray, Typhlow and Phoenix for the smoke and liquid stuff. Again, amazing stuff, totally worth to watch the six, e six episodes. They are very short, it's four or five minutes each one, and totally different between them and great stuff. And from Alidesa, he shared a personal project that he had been working on for around three months with inspiration from Inferno. He used 3ds Max with Typhlow for modeling and Arnold for rendering, ZBrush, Substance Painter for the characters, and he developed a character setup inspired in MetaHumans inside 3ds Max. For animations, he used XSense, Stretch Sense, and Facewear, and Ornatrix and Forest Pack for the vegetation. He plans to work it on the future, right now it's on hold, but I hope that he keeps working on it because this looks amazing as well. Yeti Pictures create a very nice short movie called Mini Goods about how we used to play with action figures back in the day. The main short was created and rendered in cinema and octane render, but Typhlow was used in different places, including the Kill Bill reference scene for the bullet hits, the blood splattering, and the fence fracture. Sergei created a Pac-Man game using Typhlow. 
taking as inspiration the work done by Mare Olinkari that we saw last month. Excellent execution, like always, with even a counter working and every time that you change the seed in Typhlo, you will have a totally new, a new game playing by itself. And talking about Typhlo, it's good to remember that I have a Patreon with exclusive tutorials that I publish there. This month I publish 6 exclusive tutorials for Patreons. We keep adding more motion and control to our worth destruction with debris and extra elements that we finish with a total of 5 videos. I share this month my opinion for Max 2025 showcasing different new tools and I cover on a video all the new options on recent Typhlo updates. And finally, a tutorial about how to emit debris based on the distance between rigid bodies that I think is pretty interesting. Again, all this on my Patreon, you will have the link on the description of this video. Norberto Aguilera shows some work in progress for an animation that he's working on using Biped. This animation is for a future game Norberto is working on called Starfalia Avaris, where all the animations are done using Max and Biped, and they plan to share these animations with the community. So, a pretty interesting project. And more biped animations from Jung Chang, different personal work, all Han K animated, showcasing amazing skills with biped, and yeah, the results, I mean, all the all the animations here, really nice stuff. You can feel the weight of each different character and how different these uh, they are from each other. Incredible stuff. And Praveen reproduced a very famous animation from the game For Honor that originally was in Thinking Particles, but this time he has done this with Typhlow, using also Phoenix and V-Ray for rendering. Duran did a very interesting video combining Typhlow and Artificial Intelligence. He presim all the cloth following the mesh animation, using Typhlow to randomize how they are spawned, keeping in sync with the character motion. Then he renders it with basic textures with Octane, with matte passes for the cloth, and ZDEP passes, and then using Config UI using Animate Diff, an animation model, to create this interesting result where it's blending the, the results, sometimes creating some weird stuff that I find that it's also very interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, I have been playing a little as well with Confu UI and a lot of cool stuff that you can do there. See, Shen Lin created this very cool robot that he's going in different missions and it's a combination of Typhlo and Render in 3ds Max. I don't know exactly with what, but I found it's very cute and, and interesting. Raul Fernandez worked on the company Giant Software as a vehicle artist for the game Farming Simulation 22, doing the modeling, UVs, normals and textures in 3ds Max for this really high detail model here. From Refuge, we have a mini breakdown for the work they did on the series Shogun, where they used 3ds Max and Phoenix for different shots on this popular series. Didn't watch myself the series, but I read the books long time ago, and I remember being one of my favorite book ever. So I I will need to watch this series at some point. We have a very complete breakdown by Chaos, creating a 3D robot character from concept to final render using V-Ray and multiple tools like V-Ray 4 and V-Ray Scatter along the way. Aliresa did a very nice animation of a teddy bear that he's doing the tutorials covering all the process in 3ds Max. And for now we have the two first tutorials using Ornatrix and Arnold. If you want to learn more about her and 4, uh, this is a very interesting tutorial. And at the end of April, there is a webinar by Autodesk experts in how to create captivating brand experiences with 3ds Max. It's free for everyone, you just need to register, so if this video is out before this day, please um, check it out. 
And that's all for the month of April, guys. I hope that you like it. A lot of cool stuff. I think that this month or section 3ds Max is only for RGB. We had some of the most amazing videos ever. Every month, I think they are the best. But yeah, again, a lot of cool stuff. Uh, some new plugins that they are quite interesting. And remember, if you like it, share it with your friends, give a like, give a comment, I love comments, and check my Patreon, I think that we are having a lot of fun there, creating tutorials and exclusive stuff there, and that's all for this month guys, see you soon, bye!